we get one open limper, so-called open limper, one over limper, and here we get a strong raise from this guy here who actually is playing pretty decent stats. Um, 22 V pip, 14 PFR, and yeah, he's running at 43 big blinds per 100 here, um, which, you know, we've only got a N of 284, but again, that's relatively strong hands, um, strong aggression post-flop, so it's, it's a decent player here. And as you see, he does make a textbook move, by the way. Anyway, so he raises it up to five times a big blind uh, against limpers, and we've got eights here on the button. Now, again, we're going to be hitting our set seven, yeah, one time at eight and a half, say, around 10, 11 percent. So we just call in position for so-called set mining and for the ability to maybe outplay our opponents post flop. All right, if somebody re-raises here, so say for example here a limp caller, let's see what this guy's limp call stat is, 55% uh, his limp raise is 18%, so it's relatively high. Uh, over here, let's have a look at his limp raise stat. Bottom left corner, guys, he's never doing it. So I'm expecting a call from one of these two guys, so I'm already getting 3 to 1 implied odds. Um, actually, even a bit better than that, and yeah, that's anyways the idea here, cold calling. Uh, against a guy who's raising limpers, which is not always very strong, uh, necessarily a strong hand. And yeah, so that's the idea. We're in position. We've got a, a strong speculative hand. Uh, his raise against limpers doesn't necessarily have to be a strong hand as such. And yeah, we've got position on all post-flop streets. And let's see. We get we do get one caller, two callers even. So that's fantastic. So coming into that flop, you know, we had four to one. Well, yeah, more or less four to one odds. And yeah, I assume three to one, so I was given five to one odds, you know, that I'm gonna need to make up the difference in the long run. So we whiff anyways this flop completely. Um we've got a running straight draw and a running flush draw with a middle pair. Alright. Against three players. Alright, two suited board, relatively connected, very, very difficult spot for our eights. <laughs> So, pot's now at 10, namely uh, 22 big blinds, say, 23, and we get check one, check two from the limping fellas, and now the pre-flop aggressor, right, the last guy to make a pre-flop aggressive action, is on to make his continuation bet or, or not. And he makes a continuation bet after that strong pre-flop raise of only quarter pot. So he's given me five to one odds. I only need 16% equity to make that call. <laughs> um, and so against two players, I'm just going to call this the same way that I called preflop for the same reason. Because I might still hit that eight. And if somebody's playing six nine or nine jack, you know, whatever. Um, tough luck. But this is very indicative of uh, of weakness and a really good spot for you to quote unquote float. So what we're going to look at right now is a, a floating situation where you're in position. So the last one was out of position. This is now in position floating. He makes his weakish bet, and I've got two players here, so a good move is also just to go ahead and raise that up. Uh, but again, these weak flop C bets, guys, um, from the pre-flop aggressor can also be a monster. It's very often weakness. It's very often very, very strong. Right, so over pair of queens, I better say. And we don't want to go re-raising into a guy that's also deep stacked necessarily on that board. All right. You can do it from time to time, but just you know, know who you're playing there. So we get one fold, we call, and two folds. And what I'm looking for here is basically this, matter of fact. Um, I make that cold call, uh, I, make the, I just call him flat, uh, that weak C bet, with the idea that I can essentially push any diamond, right? Or I can, I can really take the initiative on any diamond. Um, any kind of, yes, yeah, six, eight, or nine hand, uh, six, eight, or nine card on the turn, um, representing uh, some kind of funky straight. I can also take the initiative here, representing either a flop set of tens, fives, or sevens. Right, but this card is just perfect. I can represent basically everything. So that's the idea of calling a position, seeing what this guy does. And actually, if he bets, here's a good time maybe for me to raise. Because I just called that bet, and that's very indicative of a flush draw. So, very deceptive play on our part, and he does check it. So we take the initiative with our um, with our floating line, and we go ahead and make a strong two-thirds, a little under two-thirds pot bet. 
and he lets it go, I think. All right, so we are on a semi bluff right here. So we got five, six, seven, eight. All right, so we're on open and a straight draw and a flush draw. Uh, if the eight hits, of course, we're not so happy about that because any nine, of course, would have us beat um, at that point. Also, even, even any four. And yeah, so we want to go ahead and take that pot down right now, and we make our semi bluff into that pot as a floating move. So just as a recap, All right, we saw the preflop play. Okay. Limper and limper, raise, cold call on the button, speculative aids, call call, giving us good pot odds. And flop comes and we whiff. He makes this weakish kind of bet. And we only call it with the idea of betting and raising a good card on the turn, which is a good scare card. And that's how it went down. That's floating in position. Okay guys, next hand here, we're playing NL100, and we're big stacked, and if we do an analysis of the table, we see also a lot of other big stacked players here. Uh, 75 big blinds, 87 respectively, 100 plus, this guy's super deep, and almost, yeah, well, not exactly, 193.4 big blinds. Uh, big, 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 everybody's big, uh, except for this cat here, who's, yeah, right at 60 big blinds. And we're also uh, at 120, call it. So, one guy just joined the table and posted so when you guys see these kind of posts here uh, in live games I'll do that very often uh, wherever I sit down just to give the other players at the table the idea that I'm a live player ie I'm an action player and I just want to get involved real quickly of course if you're playing a short stack strategy you'll never post regardless of the position but um, if you do post on yeah, online when you're playing deep stacks I would say just as a general rule, um, especially against unknowns, you know, only post in the cutoff or the um, the button, right? So that you'll have position on the post flop play. Uh, you don't want to be posting here and then having to fold that out to any raise. So uh, just a general tip on that. So this guy does post. This is so called dead money, and the poster checks. <laughs> Imagine that, and we get one over limper, which is the equivalent of over limping here, and we make an isolation raise against these two guys. So again, um, textbook would have been four times a big blind, plus one, plus one for six. We just make it 550. All right, we get one fold, two folds, three folds, poster folds, and one call. So that was a limp call from this guy who was limp calling every other time. He He's got 53 big blinds left, uh, 13 and a half in the pot, and the flop comes too suited, as are 60% of all flops and a highly connected board matter of fact so you know seven eights already flopped the straight um, somebody playing uh, suited eight jack that does happen by the way um, especially with these kind of stats uh, is on an open end straight draw and a flush draw and we here with queen jack which is not the best of hands of course you can isolate with much worse in position like that and that's what we do always changing up our range alright so we got nine ten jack queen Right, and the running flush draw. So, uh, in this case, I mean the running flush draw is not so important. It's more when you have a heart, uh, when you have a say a suit that matches two of the board. You're more thinking of that as a blocker. Just makes it less likely that this guy has uh, two hearts in his hand. So he bets out pot. All right, so that's pretty damn strong <laughs> uh, on that flop. And so he limp called out of position and then bets pot on this board. And a guy who's playing 47% of all hands, and we do have 400 plus hands on him, um, running at, uh, he's down 52 big blinds per 100. So uh, he's a fish, and that's why, you know, hold the manager gave him the whale uh, icon. Um, I'm looking at. You know, 27% went to showdown value. So it's not that high, actually, for these kind of fishy guys. And I do have this super big draw. Right? I don't think he's necessarily on a flush draw uh, with that kind of bet. Um, good. So I'm getting two to one odds because he did pet, he bet pot. And that's what your opposition's always getting when you bet the full pot open like that. And I need 33%. Right? But my draw is actually only around 18%. So I'm giving up a hell of a lot of equity here for the implied odds. So I think if if I call this and hit, right, I see the eight, or I see the king on that board, then I've got another 40 big blinds to pick up. 
So if I take the full 26, a 27 here, plus this 40, right, that's what I'm looking at when I call my 13 here. All right, so I've got this call with implied odds, not with direct odds. Just to kind of go back to one of those concepts. And I have position. <laughs> so I can now play the guy potentially as a float. Just calling this cold, right? And if he does what he just did here on the turn, checks, right? I can put him all in since uh, his stack size is the same as the pot right now. And I don't know how I played it exactly. I can also take the free card if he checks, right? So I get two cards for the price of one. Um, that is the reason you play in position, especially when isolating uh, weaker players. You can totally control the pot. So I've got everything open to me in the world right here. And that's the idea uh, coming into such a situation. So um, I think I opt for a okay half pot bet as a float. So I cold called. Well, okay, just called him flat on the flop. He checks. I bet half pot. So I need him to fold. How much? Yes. 33% <laughs> of the time to break even. And uh, his fold to turn bets is only 24. But... Um, yeah, he's going to fold again on the river at 63% of the time. He is a whale, and yeah, so he checks it, and again, whales betting is very often indicative of what they have. And That was the idea with that uh, call in position, uh, calling for implied odds against a weak player, uh, and then looking, you could even push that. It didn't have to be a half pot, but I think I'll have the same result when I bet a half pot as I will. Um, yeah when I bet the full. The only problem about betting that half pot is if he does come over the top with a check raise, um, then I, I would have odds um, to make that call just for the uh, just for the straight. So I'm kind of setting myself up to be pot committed. In that case, you can also argue for a direct push. Alright, that's how that went down. So the next hand here, open limper, over limper, third limper, <laughs> and we make an isolation raise with nines from the cutoff against again three limpers okay so four times the big line is then two plus one here uh, 350 and just under that it's pretty textbook here for for uh, an isolation raise size right with nines on the cutoff so fold fold call call which is decent for our nines and we flop top set so it's not just top set, but it's top set on a what? A two suited, relatively connected board. So very dangerous flop for our set, even though we do have top set uh, against two players especially. And yeah, we don't want to be slow playing this on any kind of two suited connected isk kind of boards. So um, 22 in the 22 big blinds in the pot. And he and I, I'm super deep stacked here, and he's still deep stacked. This guy's here, shorty. And we'll see how this goes down. One check, two checks. They check it to the preflop aggressor, who then makes a strong C bet. Again, this time right at uh, yeah, two thirds pot size, as is very standard on two suited boards, guys. So this guy here with the 10 9 did flop top pair. And that may be good if I'm. Re raising here, or raising limpers with any kind of ace x hand that missed. All right, I might have been raising also with uh, sevens, eights, uh, any small pair, suited connectors, right? All that's possible. And so he, he may think he's good with the top pair, um, but that is very dangerous, of course, when you're playing deep stacked or big stacked out of position. And he does go for a call. <laughs> so Let's look at the pot to stack distribution at this point. Uh, it's about one sixth of my stack, one fifth, whatever, and I mean two thirds of his stack size. So even here, making that call, right? Pot's eighteen fifty. He's already in the realm of having to push. I mean, theoretically, um, push or fold on any given turn card. So. Uh, that's a really, really, really marginal hand to be just calling out of position, uh, given this board. He's basically got to hit a 10 or another 9, um, and the 8's going to scare him to death. 7 should scare him, too, um, if I am playing 7s or 8s. And, yeah, that's just 
you know, any club is also, yeah, also fatal, and, yeah, anyway, so he makes that call, turn comes, blank, right, so paired here, so anybody that flopped the sixes or the nines, as we had, now has the full, so I'm looking to get the most out of this hand as possible, and his stack size to pot size is about uh, a three to two, and so I think I'll be able to get him all in on the river regardless, let's see how I played this. Okay, I bet that. Uh, just under half pot. So I want to kind of string him along. And the thing is, I'm not worried about protection anymore. Okay, so we talked about protection, protecting your hand against a better potential hand or a draw. So here I've got the full house, nines full of fives. And I'm hoping, like hell, that he flopped either seven, eight, uh, nut straight at that point, or. Um, that he's got a 5, for example, uh, even a 5-6, worst case scenario for him, um, or that he's on any kind of flush draw. So I make this kind of smallish bet, right, which is a value bet, and there's nothing for me to protect here, so I'm just betting for value. Right? And this guy, again, I mean, if he calls that, I mean, look at this, right? The pot is now already bigger than his stack. So this is, again, not one of those situations, guys, where he's thinking, uh, should be thinking about a call unless he's holding the monster. Right. Um, this is the push fold scenario yet again. Probably could have been push folding already on the flop. You know, and not necessarily. There's not, as, as we always say, there's not any definitive right or wrong. Uh, it's always table specific, player uh, specific. Um, but yeah, very very clear lines of play, very logical lines of play um, are good things in general. And Stan, like I said. Uh, yeah, keeping with the textbook is always a good deal in the long run for your bankroll. So, again, I, with this hand, am pushing or folding uh, in that spot all day long. All right, so the board paired. Always keep in mind, guys, paired board, think trips, think two pair for sure, and also think full house. So even here on a flush draw, if you're on a flush draw, you might be drawing dead against pair nines or pair sixes. And let's say, okay, so let's say somebody had the 5-4, for example. Uh, five, suited 5-4 five, on the flop and um, you know made a made a standard C bet and then bet out here now if you're on that if you're on that flush draw and you see the four clubs out here you're gonna be thinking you know with your quote unquote nut flush in your mind right with the ace you gonna be thinking okay fantastic we're going to the bank um, but that you know that four clubs also completed my full house so you got to discount some of your some of your outs here when the board pairs and you are on a flush draw or a straight draw. Just keep that in mind. So, uh, yeah, again, we make this kind of smallish um, value bet here to increase the pot size. And, yeah, anyways, he calls it. And there's the four. <laughs> it was the four. And I go ahead and put him all in, of course, on the river. And he calls me down because he still does have top pair. <laughs> and, yeah, of course, if he had let that go in the very beginning of the hand, right, um... He could have saved better part of 83 for big ones. And I think pre-flop we had, yeah, he limped, I re-raised. And, you know, okay, suited 9-10 is something you can call, especially given these odds, right, relatively late. So he's going to only hit the flop 25% of the time to break even. And that's a hand you can call. I mean, speculative, relatively late. And if you hit hard, then you can play on. But this is already getting marginal. Again, um, yeah, and you guys saw how it went down. So, again, already here we can start thinking about letting it go. Here is definitely a push fold scenario, and he could have even at this point he still could have got out of the hand and saved you know 70 big blinds. So, yeah. Word of the wise. Good again, guys. Scenario where I didn't have to protect because I had the full house, and I was hoping that he actually hit his his draw if he were on one.